Welcome to this week's Teacher Tech Cafe Weekly TNT. We're going to be looking at how to create a tardy tracker using Google Forms. Several teachers and I have been discussing how to track tardies with a Google Form. And so we haven't come up with the perfect solution, but I wanted to share a few things with you that we, we have come up with. This could be used as a teacher input. You could use student name and create a short answer, make that required, add a question and add notes, and rather Google says that's a paragraph and that's great, not make that one required so that if you need to add some notes because the student brought in a note, something like that, if not it would just mark the tardy. Now here's the thing, once you have this fixed and we go to the responses, you will have a spreadsheet. So here's my tardy tracker. I probably should title that with the date, but this is just a sample. So let's hit create and we see that it's time stamped, the student name, and the notes. Let me go back to my tardy tracker and we'll try it out. Let's say that Sally came in late. I do want to put, if I can type her name in, I do want to put last name first so that I can sort kids by name. No notes on this one. She was just tardy. I hit submit. I want to make sure that when I set up my form, I allow myself to submit another response because I want to use this form over and over again. So let me submit another response. And Johnny also came in late. He had a doctor's note. And submit. When I go back into my form, I can click on the responses here and see a quick list, but I can also click on the spreadsheet, which I have open up here, and see that we have the timestamp, we have the students. I can go right up here and sort the sheet A to Z. And if Sally had several tardies, it would list them together. So let's go back into our tardy tracker one more time. And I'll put Sally back in. We'll pretend that she came in late the next day and submit. Now let's look at our sheet. If I sort this A to Z, we can see that Sally has two tardies and it has those time stamped. So how would I use this in my classroom? It depends on whether I use my phone, an iPad, or my desktop to record this. Let's talk about desktop first of all. I go into my settings and make certain that I haven't checked the box to limit myself to one response. I can choose to edit after I submit, in case I make a mistake, and save. Now I'm going to send myself a link. And so I click send, I click right here on the center, and I get this link. I can shorten it and copy this link. I'll go to my desktop. And I will right click and create a new shortcut. And I'll paste that link in, hit next, title it Tardy Tracker, and hit finish. And here is my icon for my Tardy Tracker. Now, when I click and open this, it doesn't take me into the editing mode, it actually takes me in where I can put in the student's name and submit. My form I created and my spreadsheet are titled and stored in my Google Drive. and So I can get to that spreadsheet at any time. Let me go in there and sort and see now that Sally has three tardies. Another option that you have, depending on the amount of time you want to spend on the front end of creating this, 
is to choose a drop down menu and then you can list your student names here and when you go to fill in the form you select the student and that makes it that much quicker. A great thing is if you already have a spreadsheet with a list of names and here I've created a few, I can copy those and come into my tardy tracker, let me get to the right one, and right here in that drop down menu I can click and paste and my list is done for me. The great thing about this also is that I can come in and add a student. Let's say that I get a new student in the class and I have Tina Moore comes in and I want to alphabetize. I can just grab a hold of this after I've typed her name and move it up and alphabetize her in the list. So there's no need to redo the list entirely. So I mentioned using my phone or my iPad to track tardies, and that's probably the way that I would go about tracking them, is on my phone. So the first thing that I would do is go into the settings wheel here, and I would, this was checked earlier to restrict to Education Service Center, and I would uncheck that. Because what I want to happen is to be able to click on the link on my phone without having to log in to my Google account. And so I've taken that restriction off and I hit save. Now I'm going to send myself an email of this form and so I would type here and send myself an email which I've already done and I've opened it on my phone. So let me close this and let me show you what that looks like. I clicked on the link that came in the email to the form. Let me get my phone here where you can see it. And this is, it took me to the form here. The thing about it is I want this on my phone so that I can click on it anytime I need it. So right down here at the bottom, I'm going to click and send this form. Here are my options. I want to add it to the home screen. And when I do, it gives it the name I already have on it, or I could change that. And I'm going to click the Add button. And now you can see on my home screen that I have the Tardy Tracker. When I click on that on my phone anytime that I need to, I then hit my drop down menu, I choose the student, add any notes that I need to, and hit Submit. Now you can see on my phone that I can edit, I can submit another response. When I close out of Tardy Tracker on my phone, it's as easy as click, and there it is again, ready to add another note. You could also add a passcode to your Tardy Tracker. If you're interested in that, check out my tutorial video on adding a passcode to a Google Form. Thanks so much, and we will continue to work on improving the Tardy Tracker. If you have any ideas, leave us a comment below. Thanks for visiting Teacher Tech Cafe.